What's up guys, it's FLF. So let's talk about Transformation Church and what they recently did. Now, Transformation Church has been something I've been kind of covering a little bit more often, a little bit more regularly. And one of the recurring themes for me is about, you know, Pastor Mike Todd, some of the different things that they've been doing, but also the fact that, you know, I think in many ways they're a very genuine church. I think they have a very genuine desire to win people to Christ and to win souls into heaven. But the one thing that keeps coming up and, and kind of keeps making me like draw a question or like maybe be concerned or maybe, you know, flag that something's a little bit off is been primarily with how they do their church services. Now, a while back, we covered a little bit about how they talked about uh, transformation um, around Valentine's Day and, and the process of being loved and how they kind of set up their stage and their performance very performative, very entertainment driven, um, a lot of like questionable sort of set designs and whatnot. Speaking of design, don't mind the background. We're uh, getting set up in the new the new studio, but that's one of the things that's kind of always stuck with me. And then you see the very performative act of where he's talking about Mike Todd, talking about tithing, brings a woman on stage and gives her like $10,000 on stage. Now, mind you, these are things that I think in and of themselves aren't bad things. I don't think... Um, Giving someone money is a bad thing. I think it's a very Christ-like thing. I don't think giving um, special care and attention to how church services are presented is a bad thing. I just think that there's been times when Mike or the church has kind of misstepped, not to call it out or like try to you know point a finger or something, but in one case, he spit on a parishioner's face or spit in his hand and rubbed it on the parishioner's face to kind of demonstrate Jesus uh, spitting into the mud and putting it on the, the eyes of the blind man, which... You know, he came out and said that was a bit over the top. Um, there's also been the case of, uh, you know, recently tackling the trans issue. And he even went on to say, you know, trans is, is a part of who we are. It's even in our name, which, again, I know he means well by saying that. Uh, and then also even bringing on a previous pastor. I forget the pastor's name, but used to be a Hillsong pastor caught in an affair. He brought them on as a member of the uh, the Transformation Church team. So all of these things, you know, while they're not something that I would say, OK, avoid this church avoid these people. Initially, you know, it was more so kind of like, are we having a discerning mindset about what's what's going on and, and how we're presenting the gospel? Um, and that's been one of the big things for me as a recurring theme is kind of like, how are we presenting the gospel? How are we presenting Christ to the world? And are we doing it in the best possible way? There's this line where it can become very performative. Um, and in particular, I want to point out a time, I'm going to read the scripture where Jesus is comparing the Pharisee and the tax collector, uh, and I'm, I'm gonna pull this up right now. So Jesus is comparing the Pharisee and the tax collector and how they're praying. Uh, and this isn't a one-to-one -one relationship on, you know, what I think it is. I, I'm not necessarily saying that what they're doing mimics this, but there is this element of like performance that comes along in any situation, you know, being an artist myself in any situation, but it can quickly steer from being performance driven to very pride and self driven. So in the book of Luke chapter 18, uh, he told this parable, Jesus told this parable. He said, two men went up to the temple to pray, one a Pharisee and the other a tax collector. The Pharisee stood um, and prayed with himself, God, thank you that I am not like other men, extortioners, unjust adulterers, and even as this tax collector. Then the tax collector pretty much goes on to say, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. I tell you that the, this man went more justified rather than the other. For everyone who exalts himself will be humbled, and everyone who humbles himself will be exalted. This is Luke 18, 9 through 14. So there was this there was this element of like self-righteousness, but also this performative nature where the Pharisees praying out loud. Um you know, Christ also condemns those those Pharisees and their actions about wanting the the best place in the in the feast, the best seat at the table. They also wanted to be seen by men so that they would disfigure their faces so that you would knew they were fasting. So when I see some of the things that Transformation Church is doing, I really wonder, are we seeing a similar sort of thing where it's being it's become so performative and over the top that it's less about the gospel and more about drawing eyes to the actual church. And I think this most recent performance is another example of that. Um, and my my biggest kind of, I guess, issue with it is when you look at this performance and you compare it to some of the stuff that I've criticized in the past, it almost looks the same. It almost looks like an MTV performance. It almost looks like a um, uh, an award show at the Grammys. It almost looks like these things. And that's not to say it doesn't look like them because the quality is so elevated or because the actual content is so good. It's more so to say it looks like them because 
the way that it's being presented is the same way that the world has presented a lot of these topics. So I'm gonna play a couple of clips right now to kind of show you what we're talking about, and then we can go from there. I'm gonna pause right here at 29 seconds. Something worthwhile pointing out also is that these songs, when you do a cover of a song or if you do an interpretation of a song and you put it out, you have to pay uh, performance royalties on that song. So I'm not sure if they're doing that, but it would be very possible that not only in performing these songs, even though they're adaptations of the songs, they have to pay these artists money for these songs. And many of these songs obviously, uh, you know, conjure up the wrong kind of thoughts and images. And I would probably say that if I was super familiar with these songs, the Christian version or the Transformation Church version isn't gonna be the one that's stuck in my head that I'm reciting. It's probably gonna be the actual song. But let's keep watching. Also think it's interesting in this part of the video that they have a woman being crucified. I don't think it's really tied in and I mean, um, tied into like a blasphemous image. I don't think they're intentionally doing that, but you have these dancing demons, you have this song and performance happening, and then you have a woman crucified, which I thought was kind of an interesting choice. Same kind of thing here. Um, it feels like so trendy and it feels like, is anyone walking away from this being edified? Like if you're a member of this church, you're sitting in the pews, you're watching this happen. Is this edifying anyone? Is it, do I go to this service? If I never go to church, do I go to this Easter service and leave like, wow, you know, God is so incredible. I can't believe that he did that in that way, I wanna dwell in the magnificence of, of Christ's sacrifice, or do I leave thinking, wow, they really put on a great show? And that's kinda of like the, the theme here, is like this is a show, this is a show. I, I know in particular that these people performing, based on some of the context I've seen, are the bad guys, like this is Lucifer or Satan and his angels, I get that part, but it just makes me wonder like, what are people walking away with? You know, Even if there's the good part, which I'm sure there's a good part where you know, the, the antithesis of this is being shown, but I wonder if that's what people are walking away with. Is Christ an incredible and his sacrifice is magnificent or wow, that was a great service and that was a great show. Not that like people will be focusing on this entirely, you know, but you have these kind of seductive or provocative movements accompanying this and these women wearing like very tight pants on stage. Again, I know it's depicting the bad side, but it seems like an interesting highlight to put on it. Like this idea of you gotta have a fatty and then the girl's looking at her behind saying, I don't have a fatty. Oh, it's not a good look. Now, this is the part of the performance that to me stood out and, and, and really felt like, okay, this is what we're seeing in the world. Like, I, I, I'm going to pull up some images alongside on right now. I'm going to put them on the screen, though. We have seen imagery so much like this in secular performance and award shows, and the drive and the theme behind it is so blasphemous that why are we introducing something similar? Like we literally have pyrotechnics on stage. We literally have this landscape of hell. I wonder if the idea here, uh, which I'm assuming is they're saying that Jesus, you know, went to hell essentially to pay for that sin, which is not something, uh, I, I think people read between the lines a little bit too much um, that they, he, he went into paradise, so to speak. Um, but maybe that's what they're getting at, they're trying to convey. So I wanna give them every benefit of the doubt but I don't understand why we would make something that looks so much similar to what the world offers and try to 
put a little Christian spin on it and think that that's going to be sufficient for what we need to do to actually tell the story, the most important story of the entire Bible uh, and the gospel. So that's pretty much it. I mean, again, like this idea that Transformation Church, I feel like they've been making these missteps. I don't know what to call them. Uh, I would say missteps. I think I'm being generous by saying missteps because I, I want to believe that they are genuinely for Christ and I want to believe that their intentions are there. And I know some of the people, not personally, but I know some of the people that performed as a part of this performance, they do have a heart for Christ as well. So I do want to try to be as sensitive and generous as to far as like, okay, are they really doing this for the Lord or for themselves? But as you have misstep after misstep, things that don't look good in the public eye, you know, when you think about music videos that have come out like Little Nas X music video or his performance on his TV show, Dicky, uh, Little Dicky being Jesus on the cross and then uh, coming down off of it. You have these kind of recurring themes that you see in secular media. Why are we going to then portray it in uh, Christian media? Uh, another verse I want to kind of bring up is um, in the Bible really quickly. Let me just pull this up. All right. First Thessalonians 522. Um, you know, this is a book that um, Paul is essentially writing to this church and he's trying to give them advice on a lot of different things. He's trying to, um, you know, kind of shepherd them uh, through these letters and give them insight and wisdom as to what they should be doing within their church. And I, I want to highlight a couple of areas, but right here, uh, uh, we scroll down a little bit. If we look at chapter five, let's go through verses nine through let's do 12. So for God did not appoint us to wrath, but it was attained salvation through the Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, that whether when we wake or sleep, we should live together with him. Therefore, comfort each other and edify one another, just as you're always doing. And we urge you, brethren, to recognize those who labor among you and are over you in Lord and admonish you and to esteem them very highly in love for their work safe, but be at peace among yourselves. Now, if we think about, uh, uh, you know, what he's trying to say here, he's pretty much telling us Christ died for us that we should have life. Let's work together. Let's edify one another. Let's admonish one another so that we grow better, which is, I think, the spirit I'm trying to come in, into this conversation with. But if we skip down uh, to verses 16 through uh, 22. Let's read these as well. So rejoice always, pray without ceasing, and everything give, give thanks for this is the will of God, Christ Jesus in you. Do not quench the spirit, right? So don't don't try to stop the Holy Spirit moving on you, giving you insight and wisdom. Uh, do not despise prophecy. So if someone prophesies over you or prophesies to you, don't despise them, receive them. Test all things, hold fast to what is good. I think that's something Christians need to do con more consistently, especially as we in are in these end times. We need to test everything consistently, consistently, consistently. And, you know, I hope no one watching this feels like I'm attacking Transformation Church or Pastor Mike Todd or, or their organization. It's not my intention, but we have to test these things. If I see something that within my own church, within another church that looks off, feels off, doesn't seem like it's uh, of God or of the Holy Spirit, I'm going to test it and question it. And even in my own heart, when I have to make a decision, I'm like, Lord, test me, show me what's right, show me what's good. How should I maneuver in this situation? It's not something that we're only looking outwardly, but also inwardly as well. This last piece as well, which I think is important, uh, verse 22, abstain, uh, abstain from every form of evil. And in the King James Version, it even says the appearance of evil. I would say that the way that these performances are presented and the way that this content is presented, it is a form of evil. Now, you know, come and scream and holler at me as much as you want, but I genuinely think that it is. And it's definitely the appearance of evil. If someone can watch that performance and walk away with any sort of inkling or feeling that, hey, maybe this isn't of the Holy Spirit, and this is in church on a large stage in front of thousands of people in attendance, we should call it into question immediately. I also understand that every time you do something, every person in the audience isn't going to be led by the Holy Spirit, right? You're going to have people that are going to complain, maybe cause a fit, and they're going to cause a fit and complain no matter what you do, no matter what situation it is. But there's that element of testing the Spirit. 
if you do a performance, if you do something and you know that you're reflecting the word of God, you know that you're, um, uh, the gospel will be preached and heard in a major way. And then someone comes up and says, you know, I think everything was great, but uh, uh, sister so-and-so, her skirt was a little too high, right? I think that's much different than saying, hey, you know, we just did like a 15 minute section talking about the demon and his angels and how uh, the demon doesn't have a big enough butt, doesn't have a fatty. I think that's a totally different level of discernment and and uh, appreciation for what the Holy Spirit is doing. I don't think God led that joke. I don't think he put that in there. There's definitely good ways to have humor and not be uh, in a way kind of promoting or you know uh, pushing certain things. And then on top of it, the songs that they're doing covers for or for are for, from these artists that we know are, are not of God, right? So doing a cover of a song that Beyonce wrote or Beyonce is the singer of is definitely not of God. And there's certain things that we cannot make holy, right? We cannot make uh, evil things holy every single time. We can take art forms and we could take um, design and we can take uh, food and these beautiful things that could be used for evil and make them for the will of God. But when we have a song that is uh, purely like, um, I think it's Diva, Diva is a, a female version of a hustler is the song I think it's called Diva by Beyonce. I wouldn't have any song, any cover of a song in a church service, no matter how much holy oil we put on that song, right? Because we know the origin and the root of it. Um, so with that being said, guys, I'm going to wrap it up here, but thank you for watching. And again, let's try to have a discerning mind, a discerning spirit. We know that in the end times, there will be false prophets and false Christ. We know that there's wolves in sheep clothing. We know that the fruit of the tree will be bad or good, depending on what kind of tree it is. And let's just continue to test those. And as always, as always, let's keep our eyes on Christ and continue to light of Babylon. God bless you.